Welcome to the Couch family. Peace, love, happiness. I'm glad to have you all here again. Glad that you can come in and share with me and sit and listen to me as I bring forth some topics that I feel that is necessary that are necessary for us to talk about. Remember my motto is whenever I'm in a blue room, whenever we are on the couch, this is our couch. It's open for discussion. There's nothing that is off limits when it comes to the topics that we can discuss when we're uh, mingling together on this couch, so to speak. So with that being said, let's talk about black psychology and let's talk about the Eurocentric psychology that we attempt to apply to our situation. The thing and the problem becomes this. If you're a trauma victim, then the psychological principles and tools that that psychologist will use or should use on you would never be the same as someone who has just had a um, minor breakup that caused them some emotional pain versus the physical trauma of, i.e. said, someone being forcibly raped or someone being beaten brutally. You understand what I'm saying? Their traumas are totally different. Their experiences are different. So the psychology that would be needed to help the person who has experienced not only the psychological trauma, but the physical and the emotional in the, in the spiritual trauma of being violated or beaten is a lot different than an individual that just experienced an emotional breakup. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about dealing with uh, black psychology and trying to utilize your centric uh, psychological philosophies or principles to uh, correct the... Uh, subtle neurosis that we're dealing with in the black community that all communities deal with but our specific neurosis stems from not just us being here as individually talking now but stems from the genetics that we inherited from those who preceded us who did endure slavery again the genes that you have have the genetic makeup of all those who have preceded us. So understand that. And this applies to anybody, black, white, red, yellow, brown, you name it. What our existence on this earth at this time, our genetic makeup is tied to all those who preceded us. Of course, those who are our immediate predecessors will have the most impact on our genetic propensities. When we're dealing with genes, you have to understand this. That doesn't mean you have to express what it is that your mother and father passed on. And it's just not a physical thing, uh, features and so forth. It's mental and emotional propensities that come along with the gene package that you get from your parents that they so gracefully share with you. So I'm going to give you an example. Uh, my wife... We're separated now, but we're still friends. My wife, she's an amazing designer. She's an amazing builder. She even drives trucks, 18 wheels. And if you look at her, you would never see or believe that she drove a truck. But her father, her father was a truck driver. She had those genetic propensities. And when she decided that that's what she wanted to do, it became easy for her to do, and she mastered that. When it came to building, like, I can't build anything. I'm just being 100. When we stayed together, she built the basement. She framed it. She uh, did the insulation. She hung the ceiling. She did the floor. She did it all. I couldn't help her. That just is not what Monte can do. That is not his genetic propensity. I watched her, gave her a little bit of points here and there, but she didn't need none of that help from me. So, in order for her to be able to do that without going to school, without having any form of training, 
it was in her genes. And she was able to express that which had been passed on to her and master that easily. And that's what she loves to do anyway. So she found her passion. So with that being said, those of us who are searching and haven't really found what it is that we love to do, that we are passionate about, maybe you should sit down with your parents if they're still living and find out what it is that they did the most preceding your birth into this world. Those things that they love to do. Those things that drove them. And then that may be a stimulus for you digging in and finding out and identifying exactly what it is that you would love to do that wouldn't be work for you. Now this doesn't say or this doesn't hinder you and box you in as being you are dependent on your parents' genes to fulfill your destiny. No, you can fulfill your destiny and override any gene propensities that you may have gotten from anyone that we may have gotten from our parents and do what it is that you want to do. That's how powerful the psychological and mental and spiritual and uh, makeup of our brain is and our mind. So we have the power to create, to go beyond, and to develop our own in spite of our genetic propensity. So don't get it twisted. I'm not saying you bound by the genes and you can't do what you want to do because your parents weren't able to do that. No, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just pointing out to you, pointing out to you the propensities that we do have that are already in us that comes from our parents. You understand? So getting back to the craziness that we see within the black uh, community, specifically, I'm just talking about the black community. There's craziness in every community. Let's make that clear. I'm specifically focusing in on the black issue right now all right so what i'm saying is we cannot depend on eurocentric psychology that was developed in the minds of individuals a lot of them who saw us as being inferior they could never really be the tools that we need to in order to develop and come out of the situations that we are in as far as our mental and emotional um, discrepancies and dysfunctions that we're that we're dealing with. So we need to examine the history of our being in this America, and then develop a psychology that uniquely deals with our with our unique situation. This goes back to the example that I gave you when I was talking about the individual that just had an emotional trauma versus the individual that had an emotional, physical, and spiritual trauma. The cure for their, or the tools that are going to help them to come out of that are going to be totally different tools. They may overlap slightly, but this individual, the one who experienced the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual trauma is going to need more than the individual that only received the emotional trauma. So we have to take that into consideration. We have to start to look at our situation, look at our community, look at the craziness that is in our community. And again, I cannot say this enough. It's not just the black community. It's all communities, but I'm dealing specifically with our situation because our situation is uniquely our situation when I talk about the whole of descendants of slaves in America, all right? So what we're dealing with cannot, the solution to what we are dealing with is not found in Eurocentric psychology. You can find some good tools that you may be able to apply and grab that out of the Eurocentric psychology. But you have to be able to develop a psychology from the perspective of the African experience in America and the African mindset uh, separated from the dominant psychological tools and approaches that are being used that are wrapped up in the Eurocentric approach to psychology. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm not saying that they're wrong. What I'm saying is they... What they have is not effective 
for what it is that we're dealing with because they don't understand what it is exactly what we're dealing with. You understand what I'm saying? You can't apply what white Americans are dealing with mentally and emotionally and then try to apply that wholeheartedly to what African Americans are experiencing mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You understand? There are similar things, certain things overlap, but there are not one thing that can be thrust out and this is the solution for all. It doesn't work like that. You have to take unique circumstances, unique the uniqueness of the individual, and then you got to apply and develop a psychology that speaks directly to that individual's experience from the genetic um, state of their being outwardly. Peace, love, happiness.